Greetings, students. Welcome to Ethnic Studies 300, Introduction to Ethnic Studies at Sacramento City College. This is spring 2023, and my name is Dr. Malika Hollenside. I am so excited to join you this semester through a powerful journey through the world of ethnic studies, where we will learn so much about the people who we share our world with, and I hope that you are as excited as I am. This introductory video will focus on a few of the most important things you need to know as you get started in this class. So we'll cover our Canvas page and how to navigate it, our course syllabus, where to find it and how to understand it, our course modules, where all of the information and resources that you need on a weekly basis can be found, what you can expect from your weekly assignments, and some of the activities and assignments that you will be doing on a weekly basis, such as discussion posts and one of your very first assignments, which are your introduction videos. At the very beginning of each semester, it is so important and valuable to me that we start off as a strong classroom community. And I know it's hard to do that because we're online and we don't even see each other online. But nevertheless, you are going to get to know each other in powerful ways through your discussion posts and through your activities. So as a community, it's very important that you feel welcome, valued, included, validated, supported, and that you feel important. Your voice and your opinion and your ability to process information and discuss it through your own perspective is everything in an ethnic studies class. So I want you to feel empowered to share your voice, your perspectives, your worldviews every week as we conduct activities in which we're responding to each other. And it's very important that we are respectful and that we make our fellow students feel included and valued and supported as well. So I thought it might be meaningful for you to know a little bit about myself because I'm going to be asking all about who you are. So this is a little snapshot of my life that I'm gonna go through really quickly so that you can have an idea of who your professor is as we get started. So if you look at the picture right underneath who am I, you'll see a picture of me when I was about four years old and my mother, this is a passport photo from when we went to Bogota, Colombia to adopt my little brother. Uh, that's my youngest picture on this page. Um, if you look down from that picture, you'll see a tropical lushness that is the island of Puerto Rico. That is a town called Penuelas um, that overlooks the southern part of the island where my family is from. However, I was born in New York City and you can see the little sunset picture that's the edge of New York City. So that is very near and dear to my heart. I am a proud Afro-Latina, Afro-Boricua, Afro-Puerto Rican. I'm black and Puerto Rican and I'm very proud of it. If you look up, you'll see that picture of myself and my kids when they were little. I love everything about being a mom. Um, they're grown now, but I always love to share pictures um, from when they were little babies. Um, if you look to the very bottom where it says the 80 bunch, you will see me and my full family, my husband, my kids, and my stepkids. So there's six kids all together. It's a very big family. Um, and everybody's grown. So they're not babies anymore, but they'll always be my babies. Uh, if you look in the very middle, that's a picture of my girls group. I'm the creative director of a nonprofit called Sisters of Mia. It's an African-centered after-school program for girls. We've been running in Sac City for about 14 years now. I'm very proud to um, work with this youth group and to have grown for quite a long time. So I am a volunteer in my community and I love to do that. Up at the top in the black and white, you'll see a picture of me with a mic. That's because I'm a singer. 
I sing reggae music. I might let you let hear some of my music during the course of the semester. But um, yeah, I'm, I, I, I love reggae. I love all music. I'm an original hip hop head also. So, you know, I, I go way back from the 80s. So I love hip hop. I love reggae. I love R&B. Um, I love music in general. If you look in the middle, you'll see an ethnic studies poster that says fight for ethnic studies. No history, no self. But if you know history, then you know yourself. I've been teaching ethnic studies for about 30 years now in a variety of different classrooms and formats. I believe in power to the people. I love working with diverse groups of people and learning and empowering each other um, as people of color and as people in general, as human beings. And I believe ethnic studies can make this world a better place. If you look at the top, you'll see a picture of a quote that says, keep me away from the wisdom which does not cry, the philosophy which does not laugh, and the greatness which does not bow before children. That's a quote from Khalil Gibran. I have dedicated my life towards working with kids. I actually taught high school for 18 years before I became a professor. I now work at Sac City College, Delta College, and Sacramento State. I'm full-time at Delta College, adjunct at both Sac State and Sac City College. And I am also a graduate of Sac City College um, as a community college. So I'm a community college graduate who went on to get my degree in ethnic studies from Sacramento State and a master's in bilingual and multicultural education from Sac State and my doctorate of educational leadership, which you see in this picture here, um, that very important day when I became a doctor of education. And that's a picture of me down at the bottom as well. So now you know a little bit about me in a nutshell. Um, and I look forward to learning much more about you as well. Okay, moving on, let's get started with our Canvas homepage. I hope that you all have access to Canvas. I assume that you do if you're watching this video. But if you have any problems with your Canvas page, please email me ASAP because we got to get that squared before we go any further. Everything that you're going to need is going to be through Canvas. And I'll say this at the get-go, it's really better for you to access Canvas through your laptop rather than your phone. I know some of you may try to access Canvas totally through your phone, and I know that that will be challenging. So I really advise you to um, either use your own personal laptop or check out a laptop through the school if possible. If you need information on how to do that, holla at me quickly, ASAP, so that we can get started on the right foot. But um, on your home page, and these are a few examples of different Canvas home page, uh, you can see at the top it says home. This is where you will see my little greetings to you. It also has information uh, that contains my email address, information about how to contact me, what's the best way to contact me. There's a link to a different format of a syllabus if you want to see a different form of the syllabus that we'll be using this semester. But this is basically our home page, home base, the first page that you should see when you open up Canvas. This is a continuation of the bottom section of the Canvas homepage, as I mentioned, that has all of my contact information. I will say this, it is always best to email me if you have questions, if you are unable for whatever reason to submit an assignment, um, I need communication and I really appreciate and value your communication with me. And I will try to get back with you ASAP if you email me. Um, I normally am on my email all day long, so I'll try to get back with you immediately or as soon as possible, right? You can also text me in the case of an emergency, um, but you know, I prefer emails unless it's a really big emergency email me um, and again 
this is the best means of communication in this course. I will also have office hours available upon request. So if you have an issue that you need to discuss with me, if you need me to explain an assignment, we can also set up the opportunity in the morning to meet via Zoom online. Um, I am here for you. Your success is my success. So I am completely accessible to you. Just reach out and let me know. Your course syllabus is located right underneath the home tab on Canvas. It has more detailed information about the course, um, the grades breakdown, uh, what you need to know as far as contacting special services, the expectations for your participation in the class, and then a really detailed breakdown from week to week about the types of assignments that you will be responsible for. But everything that you need to know is also located in Canvas. So you don't necessarily have to look at the syllabus all the time because everything that you need is going to be presented through your Canvas modules and your Canvas assignments. So the course syllabus is there as a guide. But again, you will always be able to know exactly what you're doing week to week through Canvas modules. So please get used to using the modules tab and I'm gonna explain how to do that next. Canvas modules is found right underneath the syllabus tab. So you will be using this tab to um, find your weekly readings, your weekly videos, your assignments, like your discussion posts, your journal activities, everything that you need on a weekly basis is located in modules. And I don't know if you're familiar with using modules from other courses, but for the purpose of my course, everything is broken down on a weekly basis um, through this tab. If you have any questions about this, please email me and let me know. At the very top of the modules page, you'll see a welcome module that has a bunch of different resources for learning how to navigate Canvas. Some of us are brand new to Canvas. Some of us are first time students this semester or this year. And so it's a learning process. And I understand that and I appreciate that. Um, there are no assignments in this very first module. It really has to do with how to get started with Canvas and online learning, how to manage all of your courses online, tech support, if you need resources and how to navigate um, technical issues, which is very important, right? Now, some of you are pros and you know, you're old timers, you're OGs with Canvas, that's fine. But just in case you need to utilize any of the information in this module, please do so. Um, it's important that you familiarize yourself because this is really the basis for online learning, okay? So there's no actual assignment. You're not getting credit for reading through that initial module, but it is for your benefit if you need it. What are your weeks going to look like in an ethnic studies course? You're going to have readings that will typically consist of articles or potentially a textbook chapter. You didn't need to purchase a textbook because everything that you need is going to be online for you. You will always find whatever you need online, but you will be reading every week. You will also have videos to watch every week. They're typically YouTube videos that I share, mostly uh, about 20 minutes or shorter. So you'll have a collection of short videos to watch on a weekly basis. You'll have assignments, which will either be discussion posts, which I'll explain in a minute, or reflections on the readings or the videos that you watch. Sometimes there'll be Google activities where you will be working creatively. Um, you will also be expected to comprehend critical vocabulary words. 
that are the basis of ethnic studies courses. And on a weekly basis, I'll let you know what the critical vocabulary words for the week are. And also essential questions that help guide each week um, so that you know what you should be gaining, what you should be looking for in the course content. How much time are all of your weekly assignments going to take? Well, it depends on how fast of a reader you are and how focused you are. You can expect to have at least an hour, maybe two, mostly an hour worth of readings per week. The videos will be between one and maybe two hours, but more like an hour's worth of videos. Um, the assignments that you need to do will probably take up about an hour per week. And when you have quizzes, uh, there will be four quizzes throughout the course of the semester. Hopefully they should take about 30 minutes. What I'm trying to say is that you can expect to spend between two and three hours per week on this course alone. Okay. This is not a course that you can expect to, you know, spend half an hour on per week and get a really high grade. So expect to spend three hours per week according to the course syllabus um, and the course outline. This course requires 54 hours worth of instruction and engagement. So please um, devote a healthy amount of time towards this course. Find a time that works for you during the day when you will be focused and relaxed so that you can engage and really do a good job with the content. In Canvas Assignments, which is right underneath modules, is where you will find all of the weekly assignments and their due dates. A lot of times students come to me like, am I missing something? Um, it'll notify you if it's past due or if it's upcoming or if it's past due. So if you miss a deadline, it should be very easy for you to identify what work um, you still need to turn in, right? But again, assignments is just another place where you can find the links to your weekly assignments, but they'll also be located in Canvas modules as well. As I mentioned before, all weekly assignments should be completed by midnight on Sunday at the latest, with the exception of discussion posts. Because in the discussion post expectation, I ask that you submit the first part, which is your response by Friday night. Because for your discussion posts, you're required to post your own response and then find two other students that you can read their response and reply to them for full credit of 20 points. I'll explain the discussion post um, requirements in a moment, but I do want you to understand explicitly that for discussion posts, please aim to have your post done by Friday night because then that leaves the weekend for people to read what you wrote so that they can then respond to what you wrote. If you wait until Sunday to submit your, your uh, first response to your discussion post, then most likely people won't get the chance to read it and respond to it. So the only exception for due dates is on Friday, aim to have the first part of your discussion turned in, and then by Sunday, you have to respond to two other people's posts. And I'll show you what that looks like. Your very first assignment in Ethnic Studies 35 or Ethnic Studies 34 is a discussion post that is a personal reflection. I'm going to just read it for you. It says, this course will delve deep into the experiences of Black African American or Chicana Chicano people and connect past events with modern day realities and circumstances. Before we get started, it will be important for us to consider and reflect upon our own lives and histories. For your first discussion post, please take a moment to think about your own life and the things you've experienced that had an impact on or made you the person who you are today. In two to three paragraphs, 
please explain an important moment in your life or personal history. This is posted as a group discussion and it's shared with your fellow students. So please don't write anything that's going to make you uncomfortable to share. Other students are going to see this. Next, explain why the experience had such an impact on you. Don't forget to include details and descriptions, people, places, feelings, emotions, etc. This is your opportunity to express yourself clearly and with great details to make it interesting. And I say two to three paragraphs. Please do not make this a three page uh, submission. Students need to be able to read quickly and respond to it. So it doesn't need to be a full page, okay? Try to keep this concise and this goes for all discussion posts. Now it says, please submit your first post by Friday 120, okay? This is what I was just talking about. Your first response is due hopefully by Friday. It's not a hard deadline. The actual full assignment is due on Sunday. But the first part is due Friday by midnight. That gives other people the time over the weekend to read each other's posts and respond to them. Continuing on, it says, after you post your reflection, you will read about your classmates' personal histories. Then you're going to choose two other classmates, minimum, at least two, and you're going to respond to them in a brief little one to three sentences. You don't have to write a whole paragraph, but, you know, a few sentences to let them know that you really uh, connect with them, that you're interested in what they said, support each other. You can ask each other questions. This is how we're going to dialogue and build community during this semester. So uh, it's your opportunity to talk. Um, in place of actually talking in person, this is how we're talking online, okay? The purpose of reading each other's responses and sharing your responses is to build our community. I know how hard it is to get to know each other when we're all online and we don't even meet online, but this connects us during our distance learning. So you're going to submit, submit your two responses to two other people by Sunday at midnight. This is for this week, January 22nd. Now check this out because this is so important. Your first response is worth 15 points, always. The first uh, discussion post that is your perspective, your reflection, your review, review, that's worth 15 points. Responding to two other classmates is worth another five points. So for each classmate that you respond to, it's 2.5 points for a total of five points each. The total point for your discussion is 20 points. If all, all you do is submit your response, but you don't submit to two other people, then you are only gonna get a possible 15 points. If you only respond to one other person, then you'll get 17.5 points, okay? So it's important that you know, in order to get a full 20 points, you have to respond to two other people in addition to what you write always this is what it's going to be throughout the course of the semester you're going to have seven discussion posts times 20 that's 140 points total if you don't respond to two other people you're going to miss points and you don't want to do that so make sure that you take the time to read other people as well i'm including an example of what strong writing looks like in a discussion post so that you kind of know what to aim for. Here's the most important thing, that it is your voice, your perspective, your opinion, your analysis on whatever the topic is, okay? I do not want you to just list facts and data. I already know the information that you guys are gonna be reading about and exploring. And all of your classmates are gonna to have to be reading about it as well. So there's nothing more boring than a discussion post that is just a complete reiteration of whatever the content is. What the discussion posts are for is for you to give your opinion on it. What did you find interesting? What do you disagree with or what do you agree with or what was shocking to you or how does it resonate with you? How does it impact you? Okay, what are your thoughts? It's all about your thoughts. Do not 
just give a summary of whatever your reading was. That's not going to get you credit, okay? Also, as far as grammar goes, yes, you should be using proper capitalization. No lowercase i's, no text talk, periods, uh, punctuation marks, proper capitals, like no slang as much as possible. You know, you don't have to be a perfect writer, but I do want this to be an example of professional college level writing. It's very important that you take this seriously. And what I also have to add is that I do have students who have copied and pasted from online articles or from you know different sources online, and then they copy and paste and post it as a discussion. I will not give credit if you copy and paste um, somebody else's work, that's called plagiarism. You can get an academic trouble for it. It is unacceptable. So you have to always submit your individual uh, perspective in writing from your words, your perspective, no copying and pasting. And if I do catch you copying and pasting, I will tell you this is plagiarism. I will give you zero points. I'll give you the opportunity to resubmit so that you can put it in your own perspective. But I'm pretty good at identifying when a student just copies and pastes. And I check online, by the way. I can copy and paste whatever you put in your discussion post, and I'll find it online if it's not your writing, okay? So just don't do it. The name of the game for the discussion post is it is your writing, your thoughts, your opinions, your perspectives. I include this as a non-example, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but basically it's a non-example. In other words, it's what you don't want to do is because there are several uh, examples within this paragraph where they don't use proper capitalization like the word Spanish, Columbus, um, you know, Christ. It, it, you know, you have to pay attention in college level writing. You got to pay attention to proper nouns and what should be capitalized. So that's why I included this because you have to uh, pay attention to those things and do your best. Your weekly readings, which will always be found in your weekly modules, um, look like this. For week one, you have two different articles to read. One is called Why Ethnic Studies is Good for All Americans, and the other one is the Ethnic Studies Movement History. We are setting the stage this week for the origin of ethnic studies. How did it come to be so that you can enjoy and benefit from this class that is now a graduation requirement for CSU and for an AA degree from a community college? So you're in the right place. And we're very thankful to have ethnic studies, which is so important to people in California and to the world. Uh, you will complete these readings by Sunday um, and they will carry over into the next week when we further our understanding of the fight for ethnic studies and how it grew to become a college course and a discipline academically in colleges and universities in California. The second assignment this week uh, is your student introduction videos. This is actually due on the 29th of January, not on Sunday the 22nd. So you have an extra week to do this, but still get it done ASAP. I don't want you to wait until the 29th. As a matter of fact, you should never wait until the last minute to submit anything but you have until the 29th to view each other's introduction videos. So in order to do this, you're going to access a site called Flipgrid, which there's a link on the page. Um, and you can see the link underneath instructions where it says click the link. Here's what you're going to do. When you click the link, it's going to take you to a class page on Flipgrid. You're going to read the instructions and you are going to record a one to two minute video where you introduce yourself. You're gonna tell us your name, uh, one interesting fact about yourself, what you like to do for fun, what are your goals in life or maybe for a career? What are you doing in college? What, what are your academic goals maybe? 
something you want to get out of this course, and a positive affirmation statement that you create. An affirmation statement is a statement that affirms something great to happen to you. So for example, it's an I am statement typically, like I am capable, I am worthy of great things, I can overcome anything that I encounter, right? So you're going to say a statement that you make up. And this is something that I want you to actually use as you go through the semester. If life gets hard, if the content gets challenging, if school gets to be overwhelming like this, I want it to be meaningful. This is something that you should really mean. Okay. So you're going to record a short video. It's going to be one minute to two minutes max. Um, and just tell us about yourself because this will again help us establish classroom community and this is your second assignment for the first week but it's actually due on the 29th are you the type of person that has difficulty organizing or planning out your work for school around your week if so I have created a proposed schedule for your own time management, right? For your modules. Um, this is general. I know some of you are working. I know some of you are full-time students. Um, so you have the option to complete your work whenever you can, however you can. You just got to get it in, right? But here's the general guidelines. Maybe this might be helpful for you. Maybe not. But okay, let's check it out. On Monday, you should always check your announcements and emails. It is very evident to me that not all of my students look for the announcements that come through on Canvas or your uh, school email. I communicate with you if anything ever changes, um, if due dates get extended, or if there's a change in the course, I communicate with you. Uh, so you have to get in the habit of checking your emails regularly it will make you a stronger college student if you do. Um, and there's no excuses for you to miss information that's important that comes from me because, oh, I just didn't check my email. You have to check your email. You're a college student, so get in the habit of doing it. So typically, I'll send emails out on a weekly basis. Um, check them as they come in, but always at the beginning of a new week, you should be looking for new announcements and emails. On Monday, you might want to go in, look at what your assignments are going to be for the week, right? Um, and maybe you want to start off watching the first module recording or the PowerPoint that I present. I will try to share an email, uh, uh, sorry, a PowerPoint every week so that it helps guide you through the week's content. And maybe on Monday, you complete part one of the reading. Then on Tuesday, uh, maybe you watch one video or you listen to the music in case I share music or you might want to review the PowerPoint on Tuesday um, or maybe you, you know, complete a, a, another assignment or start another assignment on Wednesday. Check announcements again. Check for your emails again. Um, maybe you want to get one of those assignments submitted at the middle of the week so that you don't have so much to do by the end of the week. Thursday, you continue with your reading, you complete your videos. On Friday, always aim to submit your discussion post, the first part of your discussion post. Get in the habit of thinking, yeah, Friday is when I'll submit my discussion post. And maybe after you submit yours, you're ready to respond to your classmates post. That's cool as well, right? On Saturday, nobody really likes to do homework on weekends, but if you work during the week, you might have to do all of your work on Saturday and Sunday, and that's fine. If that's what it is, that's what it is, right? But, but um, if you've been working throughout the week, maybe you want to finish up on Saturday um, by responding to your classmates' posts. You can use the weekend to kind of sum up by responding to other people's discussion posts so that by Sunday, you've turned in everything that you need to turn in, um, and you're cool and you're ready for the new week's work um, starting on Monday. This is just an example of how to organize your time. I hope that maybe this might be helpful to some of you. So I know I've talked your ears off and this will be pretty much the only time this semester that I give this much detail about the basics of the class. 
So it's the only time that you're going to have this technical kind of presentation to watch and listen to. I hope that it's helpful. Um, if you have any questions that are still unanswered, you got to email me and I'll get back to you. But until then, here we go. This is the beginning of a great semester. I look forward to wonderful learning and growth and powerful stories that we'll share with each other. And I know that this course um, can change your life because it changed mine. And I hope that you are ready to go and inspired and motivated to do your best. I'll see y'all next week. As we conclude, just know that I believe in you all. I want the absolute best for you in life and in school. I want you to try your best and communicate with me so that I can support you throughout whatever challenge you may have this semester. And you are worthy and capable and strong. And I hope that this course is enriching, inspiring, and that it makes us all into the best human beings that we can be. <laughs>